This is Cathy Bogan for Consortium News. We are outside the Noisy Leaks exhibition, The Art of Exposing Secrets, and this exhibition has a lot to do with Julian Assange. I'm very lucky to have a guide, and uh, here we are in Berlin. <laughs> Someone is going to tell me what's here. Welcome to Noisy Leaks. <laughs> when you enter the, the gallery, maybe one of the first things your attention is attracted to is this uh, fantastic original piece by Sarah Lucas. Huh. Did, did anybody mention authoritarianism? And it has been made especially uh, for us and is uh, pretty much setting the tone. I think to a lot of the things you're going to see in the, in the, the expo. Well, this is kind of like the jackboot, isn't it? <laughs> coming it is coming down on definitely. some very, very then, sensitive parts. <laughs> another thing that may attract your attention is the, the TV here with a vintage 1986 NES Nintendo console. Yeah. It is uh, running a 2019 game called What Remains. <laughs> which is uh, a story about disinformation and whistleblowing. Right. In the game, you're a little girl in 1986, uh -huh. learning about fake science produced around uh, secondhand smoking, um, acid rain, and other environmental issues. Uh -huh. And your tool to interact with the world is to blow the whistle, uh -huh. and uh, the rest would be spoilers. I recommend anyone to to play it, as you can get it for free on the internet and run it on your computer with an emulator. Oh goodness gracious, I can see that the scan rate on the television oh, is absolutely. also... It's also vintage, because I'm getting the scan line running around. Absolutely, it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a vintage TV with a vintage console yes. and, and a very modern game <laughs> running on it. Yes. This is one of the numerous uh, pieces by Daniel Richter. Oh, yes. A very powerful piece, as you can <laughs> say. Piece. This image that you recognize from the assassination of Ben Laden and yes. those three monkeys that instead of covering their eyes, mouths and ears, they are actually expressing themselves through the arts. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a cynical little face, isn't it? Goodness gracious. Let's look at some of the... Let me, let me just film some of, of this detail. Please take, take the time. Superbly. Superbly painted there. Is it? This is, is a it paint? Oh, it's a collage, and we think, I guess. So they're watching the assassination of Osama bin Laden. Of course. The little the, the picture in the background. I see Obama. I'm pretty sure Kathy recognized the picture immediately. <laughs> oh, there, there's two. Yeah. <laughs> and Bolton. Where's Paul? Where's John? Oh, that's Hillary. Yeah. Goodness, where's John Bolton? I don't see Is any one of the three? Yeah, the Trump administration. Then immediately to your left, you'll have a very rough time filming this uh, quote unquote hologram. Actually, uh, no, it's. Uh, you, oh, goodness gracious, yes, yes it's strobing. Right oh, folks, for this. this. For this. So, it yeah. only means that people will have to come and experience it by themselves until the 30th of October. Oh, the, look, what, we, what we're seeing here is a hologram. And uh, I can see uh, this is underground. And we have the prisoner attached with it's electrodes. A it's a 3D sculpture based it's on a piece by the Norwegian street artist Aetka that he put in the streets of uh, Bergen in Norway. Yeah. Uh, which is called the persecution. And you can see a lot of tiny details, including the Colasformer video, this drone hovering it's in the wonderful. front, all those cameras and this uh, surveillance atmosphere. And indeed, the main figure evokes uh, Abu Ghraib uh, and the torture of Guantanamo with the orange tone of the, of the gown. Yeah. So a very complex and uh, at times subliminal uh, piece. Indeed. Yeah, I just caught a flash of Chelsea Manning as well. So who's the artist? Who uh, Aifka is this uh, anonymous uh, Norwegian street artist. Right. Who did several pieces in the streets of Bergen in Norway where he's uh, apparently based. Yeah. Uh, related to, to Jürgen. Yes. And uh, we are very lucky to have this piece because it's very rare to him to, to actually expose. Like yeah. This. 
If you look here and to your left, you will see this impressive piece by uh, Ito Steyel. It's a 2015 piece that is based on the Syria files released by Wikileaks. Wow. And through a very meticulous uh, analysis of the documents, she ends up demonstrating very disturbing corruption in the world of art. How international sales of art is used for tax evasion, how most of the art institutions in the world are basically in bed with the Bashar al-Assad regime, at the same time the international so-called community is criticizing him for his civil war. Mm. And it's a very in-depth and very uh, engaged piece from an artist who is actually very renowned uh, in the world of art today. Mm. So it's a really an, uh, an activist piece, if you will. It would take you a while to to, uh, to to watch it in full because I think it, uh, it lasts for 30 minutes, but it's very much worth uh, paying attention to. Yeah, so we have headphones here, so you can. We could also uh, play while, that while, while filming it. Uh, the refugees have fled the advancing militias of the Islamic State, which invaded um, Iraq in August 2014. Uh, 200 Yazidi refugees from Shankar are sheltered in the gallery. To your, to your left is another piece by uh, Daniel Richter, the famous uh, German painter who gifted us with uh, three of his pieces, actually. And uh, this one is a theme we have explored before. So we have written on this, uh, I don't know if it's so clear, in the video, but it says "fuck the place." I'm pretty sure it will really be visible on the, <laughs> on the screens. That's a beautiful piece, beautiful texture. And right next to you is this uh, multi-model sculpture. Pretty sure you didn't record it well. And this is a piece by Daniel Lismore, the London-based fashion icon and friend of Julian, uh, who describes themselves as a living sculpture. Daniel is always shown in these uh, improbable uh, uh, outfits uh, composed of innumerable uh, details. And uh, he gifted us with this uh, piece called Activist. Uh, you can see many references to, to Assange, to Manning, and, um, and the frame around the, the face of the subject. Um, evokes either a painting, a portrait, or maybe is it a mirror? Is it a piece in which we should look at ourselves to see our face uh, uh, muted, censored? Um, a very complex and, and, and beautiful piece indeed. And uh, the subject is wearing this gown that says uh, Free Assange. That is, I think, uh, a banner from an actual uh, protest uh, uh, in London. And yeah, this... Um the police tape as well. Uh -huh. I've seen that on the road. There was one piece with people in orange jumpsuits lying on the road with this crime scene tape. Exactly. Before moving on to the next room, you may pay attention to this uh, screen over there that you're likely to have overlooked. Uh -huh. The screen is off, yet the logo of the TV is uh, lit, which may leave you to wonder if you pay attention. Actually, this very model... Is this a of, reference to Vault 7 by any chance? You got it, can no. you? This is the very same so-called smart TV. Yes. That is being referenced in the Vault 7 as being the victim of the uh, Weeping Angel cyber weapon of the CIA that yeah. enables them to remotely activate the camera or the microphone yeah. of the piece with Weeping us. Angel, that's, that's it, the one. that's the one. So, this black screen that TV becomes. with its logo on is uh, randomly sitting in an awkward corner here. Maybe oh. it is watching us right Hello, now. Hello, boys! Hello! <laughs> uh, over here is, um, I think it's not functioning at the moment, but this no. is a Theremin antenna um, that oh. when you approach your hand is reading sort of a song with the names of the programs of the CIA and the NSA by Melissa Logan from the Chicks on Speed. Uh -huh. And if you enter the next room, here, of course, on the wall is uh, what may catch your eye at first, is this imposing map of the actors of the persecution of Julian. Oh, gosh, It yes. is a collective work done on a wiki, on the Challenge Power wiki. Yes. Uh, a lot of it based on the so-called you know, open source intelligence. 
Absolutely. Uh, consortium news is one of the major sources uh, for the information that is actually listed on that board, but also you know, Declassified UK and a few of the real uh, independent uh, investigative outlets that are uh, out there in the world. So it exposes the, the collusion, it exposes the conflict of interests. Uh, one obvious one on the very top, you see Dick Cheney, the chief executive of Halliburton, uh, profiteering from the war in Iraq while he was advising George Bush as a vice president at the time. So yeah. he's ironically on top of that map as a sort of the godfather of all conflict of interest. But if you look uh, a bit to the bottom, you see, and you can see uh, familiar with her, the judge Emma, uh, Emma Arbuthnot, whose uh, husband, the Baron James Arbuthnot, uh, is um, one of the chairs of, you can follow this arrow here, is if I may, one of the, the, the chairs here of Thales, the yeah. weapon company that has been further exposed by the spy files of WikiLeaks. Continuing the, the so, tour. So where's Arbuthnot's son? Isn't so he, exactly. The, shouldn't he be on this? Lady Arbuthnot's son, uh, Alexander, is here. There he you is. can see that he's the vice president here, going that way of Dark Trace. The company oh. that is uh, exposing whistleblowers and yeah. recruiting NSA employees. And so it's a um, half research, half art uh, piece that is very, very dear to our hearts. There's pretty, pretty Patel is there indeed. Pretty Patel. If you were to look for um, a common thread to the works exposed here, I think it would be that they're all trying to tell a very complicated story to expose. Uh, complexity oh, and to yes. somehow make sense of the density that is the, the story of Assange and, and Wikileaks. Well, there's Sir Alan Duncan. Oh, yeah. and we know from his diary that he was instrumental in persuading Lenin Moreno to evict Julian from the embassy and gloated about it in his diary. Exactly, and you can see he's a 40 years old Operation friend. Operation Pelican, wasn't it? Exactly, Operation Pelican is also a 40 years old friend of the Lord Chief Justice Burnett who is one of the prosecutors of Assange. Well, that's right. We kind of thought that this would be good news when Burnett arrived on the scene because he had decided not to extradite Laurie Love, and that was for health reasons as well. And he tried to say in the courtroom that there was a difference between Laurie Love and Julian Assange because Laurie Love was suffering, they were both suffering from depression and Asperger's, but Laurie Love was suffering from a physical condition as well, which at the time, and still is, eczema. But since then, Julian has had a mini stroke, and so he has a physical condition as well, and one would presume then that there would be no difference. Absolutely. However, that's never been heard in court since. If I may, and if you film the, the, the bottom, you'll see that there is an interactive version of the map online oh. that would uh, enable you, it's based on the wiki and based on the data of the, of the wiki that we use to, to generate so, it. So this is so, it here, map, map challenge power, dot info. So there's also a bunch of posters that everyone is free to take with the design of the map on it, so if you want to take a look here. On oh, is that a tongue sticking up? What is it? You can see that the letters on the tip of it read Deep State. Oh, Deep State. It's a piece by Davide Dormino, the Italian sculptor. Oh, yeah, he's wonderful. Did, uh, Anything to say, exactly. yes. That's one of the two pieces he, he gave us uh, for this exhibition. Yeah. Uh, over here, you will find this uh, singular box that oh. is also a box of ammunition by the US Army, the War Crimes o -Matic. And you may actually wonder what this red button does, so I suggest that maybe while I hold, you may want to actually press it. Oh goodness. All right. Oh, you got a big one. That's a record for you. Well, what, what, what is, is it now my life story? Oh, sorry. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, so this is... Are these, these are from the WikiLeaks uh, releases, are they? Towards the bottom, yes. you will see a count. Yeah. This one is 15 killed and one wounded. This is indeed a random Afghan war diary. It's a war, war diary. 
where at least one person has been killed. Right. That's what the war crimes o uh, gives to every visitor. You've got a particularly long one here. I certainly did. That That's one for an investigative uh, journalist of your talent, I guess. Well, it goes down to the floor. I'm standing here. Joey, do you want to try the war crimes o Press the well, red that's button mine. Here. You press the red button. See, see what this is. Joe Laurier, editor in chief of Consortium News, we're visiting. So let's see what. Oh, thank you. Also have a very Joe, long one. Not quite as long as mine. It's a random uh, warlock from Afghanistan oh, involving at least one death. Well, of course there were fifteen thousand, weren't they? Unreported. More than 1,500 reported civilian deaths from the Iraq and Afghan war yes. yes, that's right. A lot of people weren't mentioned as mm -hmm. casualties. Mm -hmm. On this other wall, there is another complex flowchart. It's the Algoff Shore, an algorithm um, based on research on numerous uh, financial leaks, including the Julius Baer leaks. Oh, the bank ones, yes. By the, the fine people of the Ribbon Collective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Basically, if you follow this algorithm from the start to the end, and of course, if you can afford the steps on the way, you will end up paying no tax. It's as simple as this. Oh, uh, goodness gracious. This flowchart uh, saves you five years in business school, and uh, if you can afford, again, it saves you a whole lot of uh, contributions to, to the world. But yeah, get a good photo of this one. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a bunch of uh, other ones that you can consult, um, including uh, tax optimizers through art that actually resonates with the piece of Hito's tail in the other room, a way to anonymize financial transaction, uh, how to anonymize uh, ships. Um, right. And this box over here is, um, uh, well, it's written here, it's a, a seeding unit. It is sharing over the BitTorrent network the Julius Baer uh, leaks. In real time? In real time, using the BitTorrent protocol. So it is basically enabling those data from WikiLeaks to remain online. Oh, that's ingenious. Um, of course, the Julius Baer, were, that was back in 2009, was it? I think so, yes, yeah, yes. It's a very early one. This is also a piece by Daniel Richter. This is a poster for the event that you will see also uh, printed later as one of the main free posters that uh, one can uh, get uh, here at Noisy Leeds. Yeah, that's, that's such a good artist, that one. You probably saw already this panda. It has been made by uh, Ai Weiwei and uh, Jake Applebaum. Uh -huh. The panda is stuffed by uh, Revelation. It's stuffed by uh, with Snowden documents and I think a micro SD card as an archive of the leaks. What do you mean, inside it? Eh? Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, you're not supposed to touch the art, but... Uh, oh, uh, it, I'm yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> it is cute. Uh, it invites <laughs> touching. Still, it is an invaluable piece by Ai Weiwei. And, uh, I uh, people <laughs> can... I won't tell anyone. We won't tell your, your, your viewers that you I'll just the pull this no, down no, yeah, I, a little bit. So you're not supposed to do that. But, people uh, can see, uh, read. What it says uh, from the T-shirt. So it is stuffed with the with the, the leaks uh, of Snowden and others. Yeah. But also the fun fact is that Panda is the name of a cryptographic protocol for key exchange. And in Chinese, the word Panda sounds very close to a slang used for describing the secret services. Ah. Also, the, the pandas were smuggled out of China, which was also part of the of the piece as a gesture, well, as a comment on the geopolitics of the, of the time. Yes. Uh, here on the two screens is another uh, piece that pre-exists or expo that you may be familiar with. It's a delivery for Mr. Assange by the Median Group uh, Disney. Yeah. This is uh, this parcel equipped with a GPS and a camera that was sent to the Ecuadorian Embassy uh -huh. and documented in real time its journey through the oh, yes, I remember this one. oldest corners of the British postal system. Um, so this is the, the screen that reports, and the other one is the one with the pictures. Oh my god, okay. yes, they're filming. So in fact, the, the artist is tracking in reverse, right? It's, <laughs> actually, it's a leak of data in itself, yes. a leak of data of what happens to a strange parcel going to a strange destination. Hang and save um, the bank. So, so these are messages that are being sent to um, WikiLeaks in real time. There yes. were messages sent uh, via Twitter, either by the parcel itself with its location, or by the Median Group of Bitnik, the artists who were tracking 
ourselves. Now arrived and is with the embassy security. So they couldn't yeah. hide it, they couldn't throw it away. Yeah, the boss had just arrived in the embassy. Oh yeah. So they had synchronized these two. Exactly. I see. They need to be seen in conjunction. Yeah, this was a wonderful piece, wasn't it? So that's, okay. this is inside the embassy, right? Definitely. Right. And it's sitting on the desk, filming the, the opposite wall. What the hell is that? I guess it's an Ecuadorian cat. Oh, it's an embassy cat? No, no, no. It's a much uh, bigger cat. Oh, right, I see. Incredible. In the world. And I think this is Julian receiving the the parcel. Ah, oh, excellent. This was a beautiful piece. I do remember. What year did it? It was 2013, was it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I recall this one. It was oh, quite it was exciting. Sisun Julian appeared. Yeah, there he is. The camera. And he. These images that we remember where he spent the last hours uh, playing with the, the parcel. Well, I only ever saw stills from this, exactly. still photos. I've, I've never seen the, the video. And this is the actual parcel taking the... Ah, exactly. oh, incredible. So he's not quite sure whether it's filming him or not, but he's... I think, I think they were seeing on Twitter in real time. Yeah, it's filming you. We can see you. We can Here see to your right, yeah. you see one of the latest pieces by Davide Dormino. Yeah. It's this ominous book made of stone uh, yeah. with these ominous uh, looking spikes, rusty spikes. Yeah. And if you get closer, you will see the title of the book. It calls for getting closer. It is indeed the WikiLeaks files. Oh, is that the Wiki? Wiki? Where, you can where see is it the lettering here, oh, the WikiLeaks files. Yes. I have a copy of the WikiLeaks files at home. Some Australians that contributed to it. Uh -huh. Now, to your left, you will see a public library of three meters of the diplomatic cables of Cablegate. It's all the cables from Cablegate classified with secret or secret slash slash no form. It's 66 volumes. Joe, you may uh, go for his camera to pick one of these volumes and open them. We're taking volume 31 that contains 239 cables from the fifth week of 2008 to uh, later that year. These were actually printed in books. That's this incredible. A work by the Institute for Decent and Data Law. How many editions are there of this? There's only one. The only one? Only one, one. Right unique. And um, what, when, when were these actually printed just recently? They arrived the morning of the day. Wow. <laughs> it was done for this show. It was done for this Brilliant. show. Brilliant. Where did it go after this? Back to them? It an original we, artwork. When the show was over, we don't know yet. We should go to a permanent exhibit in a museum. We'll, uh, we'll consider options. So if you look over here, you'll see the numerous posters that everyone can uh, get here for free. Well, you're also free to make indeed a donation. Oh. But the poster by Daniel Richter, among with a few artworks, uh, like you may remember, you may remember this splendid mural. This is a wonderful place, yeah. And that was put in the streets of Berlin, a 20 yeah. meters high mural by Captain Borderline. Oh, is that how big it was? It was I 20 realize. meters high. 20 it, meters. This is a piece by AFK, the same Norwegian street artist that did the hologram in the other room. Oh, yes. And among the freebies for you, Cathy, this is the soundtrack of a war crime. It's an actual cassette tape of the soundtrack of the collateral murder. Oh, thank you. So you should have one oh, I, as well. I don't... You should give it to somebody more important. There's hundreds of those and you are important to the story of Assange and Wikileaks and we're all absolutely... Uh, can you say fucking delighted on the camera? I you mean, can. No, yeah. Fucking delighted that you can get one. Because oh. we're all admirers of uh, Consortium News and you're among the sources that were the most useful to some of these works here. So if anyone here deserves it, it's you, Kathy and Joe. So 
Yeah, there's a couple of things we have. Oh wait, yes, of course. You you missed one of the, the funniest uh, works of them all. This is the Call a Spy by the Peng Collective. This phone is connected to a system with more than 30,000 phone numbers that are actual phone numbers, extensions, not front desks, at the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, the German Verfassungsschutz and Bundesnachrichtendienst, the French DGSE and DGSI, they were renamed DCRI and DCRE. So the actual spies, I don't know if we can, uh, we'll be calling the USA. Hello. It's very funny to play pranks on them, asking them if, uh, for instance, uh, that's my last call to them, you can ask them, uh, is there a leak? I see water and documents everywhere. Um, <laughs> on the floor, uh, you, see, you see a leak? Could I speak to Mike? Oh, he doesn't work there anymore. Oh, okay, wrong number. Who could see the show? So we are mostly a bunch of friends of Julian Assange who wanted to try to help him. And also now speaking only for myself, I've been trying to help him while telling a deeper story than the story of somebody who may or may not be a journalist and is being tortured right now. To tell the backstory, to tell the, the, the origin, somehow as we are talking of journalism, uh, going back to the source of WikiLeaks and the persecution of Assange. And um, I think it's a common trait to a lot of the works you see exposed here is that they, they're diving into the deep complexity of WikiLeaks and the various leaks of WikiLeaks. You're standing in front of this map that exposes the conflict of interests and the complexity of a legal case being fought in five jurisdictions that is absolutely unprecedented. So we had in common, I'm mostly speaking for myself, but I think we had in common to be Julian's friends and to be frustrated by not seeing the big picture in the media, and also now back to speaking to myself while our opponents are constantly using storytelling and weaponizing storytelling against the people, and where misinformation is being uh, industrialized in our world, and those armies of sock puppets, you know, controlled by the agencies and so on, we felt that it's only legitimate that we use the tool of storytelling somehow to be telling our own stories that we use fiction as an inspiring tool for uh, telling the story we actually want to be telling, which is the story of the origins of WikiLeaks, the roots of the persecution of Assange. So we met with one of the operators of this lovely gallery space that is a self-run artist space that often do uh, expose, and we thought that we'll do this crazy project of trying to assemble some of the most prestigious artists in the field of modern art, like Hito Steyel, Ai Weiwei, Daniel Richter, Sarah Lucas, and also some uh, unknown anonymous uh, artists all together. But also the idea was to do something that is somehow much more than an expo. It's an expo about diving deep into complexity, so we, we had to do something deeper. So besides an expo, it is three weeks of events, of meetings. We see the place, there is a, a room to the back, uh, where we can sit and chill and invent other type of stories. So the idea was the expo was somehow the entryway to a longer occasion, to an event, to be together, to regroup, and maybe to invent the next parts of that story. So to your knowledge, this is the first uh, art exhibition devoted uh, exclusively to these things. I would say so. I would say so. Are most of the works here uh, works that existed somewhere else? For example, I saw this film in the Norway in an art festival. Uh, and you reached out to those artists to contribute, or is there anything new, original? I, I would made say just I, would, this? I would say that about half the artworks, yeah. maybe a bit more than half the artworks, are actually original artworks. But indeed, a few are more ancient, and we expose them as something that is more or less timeless. You know, the piece by Hito Steyel in the other room is from 2015 and is related to the Syria files. So it is somehow a marker in time, at the time of the Syria files, of what happened then, and all this is inscribed in a continuity. One piece that you cannot see due to technical reasons here is a, a recreation of the collateral murder video with uh, white apes that was part of a theater play that uh, Angela Richter did in 2012 called Assassinate Assange. 
this piece had only been shown in theater before being shown here. So is it an original piece or not, you know, it's to be discussed. So I think Angela's piece, dated 2012, is probably the most ancient piece of them all. And so from 2012 to 2022 is somehow a, a continuity in the timeline, in the timeline of WikiLeaks and in the timeline of the persecution of Julian Assange. Was that performed here? Or, uh, uh, it, it was on display on that wall from that projector, which light bulb apparently but died last it was night. Here in a theater in Berlin. Or uh, it was, yeah, it, yeah, I think it was shown in theaters in Berlin and through Europe as well. So you're, oh, it started on October 13th. Uh, October the seventh, seventh, and it's running from the eighth to the thirtieth. And anyone is very welcome, check the website for a very uh, dense program uh, of events. We have a concert and music jam on Tuesday the 18th with a Palestinian musician called Dirar Kalash, who is a multi-instrumentist experimenter that maybe will turn into a music jam. We had a piñata party with our uh, Guatemalan friend Renata about a smashing corporate secrecy that was an uh, in-depth dive into the corporate secrets exposed by Wikileaks. And we built this lovely piñata where we put the logos of these corporations that we filled with our uh, wishes for exposing new secrets that we collectively uh, beat down to, to a pulp in the gallery. <laughs> they will be with Matt Kennard on the 22nd uh, of October, uh, a British tea party about uh, exposing the economics of the empire. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you, you may want to press that red button. You, you may want press to press the button. red button. Yeah, yeah please, please, please. Can I just film your hand? Uh, of course. Wow, long ones today. It's a, I mean, it's a good sign. Afghan <laughs> warlocks. Ah, yeah. and, uh, as we'll see uh, later in this video, tonight there's a special guest speaking here. Uh, uh, yeah, later this afternoon, Stella Assange will be with us for an Ask Me Anything session. We'll see what happens. I do hope that the uh, maybe inspiring, maybe stimulating, maybe relaxing setup of our gallery and the proximity of so many friends may, uh, well, may at least make her feel a little bit better than she usually feels and may make us maybe feel more comfortable opening up to the crowd. We've been talking about this event day and day and uh, there's a fantastic response by the public of the gallery who were all, everybody said, oh, then I'll come again on, on Friday. One thing that is really uh, telling to me and like really uh, inspiring also is that it's now six days and a half since the vernissage and we've seen people coming for the fourth time mm -hmm already. Wow. We've seen people who were here at the Vernissage mm -hmm. and came back for almost all the events. Yeah. So it feels like we are somehow uh, well, feeling a need. As many people coming here know either a little bit about Assange or Wikileaks or know the, the full story, but all agree that there is a need to you know, sit down and relax around some more thorough material than the few snippets and the few headlines that we sometimes uh, read and hear uh, about him. So that's one of the main thread of the works assembled here is to actually take time to dive into this complexity and try to collectively make sense out of it. I think honestly that it's maybe the only way that we may get the strength and the inspiration to be capable to write the next pages in this long story. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Welcome. Now there's one person who is not on this who was highly significant in the Swedish story, oh, yeah. and that is the Swedish Chief Justice Stefan Linskog, mm -hmm. who came to Australia, and he was the one that we captured on tape saying there was no legal reason why she, Marianne Nu, would not either come to London or use mutual legal assistance. It was a standard procedure yeah. because it was simply an investigation, right? Mm -hmm. To pose the questions. She stalled until it could be stalled no longer. It was five years of inaction. But Stefan Linskog, back in 2013, came yeah, to Australia too. and he said, no, there's no legal reason why she's doing this. Yeah. So I think it's not legal, it's political. Yeah. It's always been political. I think I'm going to take the mini version of this. This is the one I want. This one for me. 
okay, it's a, been a remarkable exhibition here. Um, the only thing we haven't seen uh, so far is uh, the cell, the reproduction of the Sancha cell. And that hasn't opened yet, but we'll go in, in there in a little while. I'll take you in with me and uh, you'll see what a, how small it is. I've only seen a little bit of it on video, but we'll be back soon uh, inside a Sancha cell. So this is one of the key pieces of the exhibition. This is outside the exhibition space. And this is a replica of Julian Assange's cell. I haven't been inside yet, but I've heard there's been some artistic license with the decor inside, but these are the exact measurements of Julian's cell. And I've been told that the best thing that you can do is to go in there alone and experience what it's like to be in that confined space. So let's go in and take a look. And then from what I gather, I'm going to be locked in here on my own. Oh goodness, it's uh, quite awful. So what we have here is uh, it's really quite hard hard to film it's a, we have a toilet we have a little stool and we have a we have a table here and then we have a we have a sort of a a bed a camp bed and here we have a Guantanamo suit orange jumpsuit. I'm now locked in the cell. The door is closed and this is very very tiny space. It's just really quite horrible. And I know what these I know what these sounds are. I feel the sound is yeah it's coming from the other side of the wall. Now these sounds are an actual recording from Julian's cell, I've been told. This is a recording of Belmarsh. This is what he gets to hear every day. People are losing it, completely losing it. Very angry. And that's it. It's a really horrible space. I'm just going to sit on the bed and with my back against the wall and you get a clear idea of the size of the, this space. There you go. This is the this is the space that Julian Assange has been held in. It's quite a low ceiling as well. So incredibly incredibly oppressive day after day for years now okay so I'm going to knock on the door and I hope they hear me right, I want out of here as quickly as possible can you let me out please hello It went open. <laughs> so, Loria, really freaked me out there. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're here with Tom and Manya. Manya, and they have created this extraordinary uh, exhibit that's here parked across the street from the gallery where tonight we, we visited the show, Noisy Lakes. What this is, is a replica of the exact size of the cell where Julian Assange is staying in Belmarsh Prison. It's called Belmarsh Live. You can get information on Assange Network, dot network. And uh, can you tell us the origin of the idea of this truck and where it's been all uh, in Europe or certainly in Germany? 
In the moment we are um, in Germany, while we plan to go to Brussels, to Strasbourg, to London, we want to go everywhere with the show and the idea is to make people aware of Julian's situation and prison conditions he is living since over three and a half years now. And uh, you said originally it was permanently in one place and then you decided to put it on wheels? Originally it was in one place in an exhibition in Leipzig and uh, Tom had said that we need to bring it on the road, we need to bring it everywhere that people see it. And what we has come been, to the people now. And what has been the reaction of people when they go inside? They are all shocked. Yeah. yeah. Do most of the people yeah. who go inside know who Julian Assange is and, what, and something about the case? On last Friday we had a lot of people who didn't know and then became aware of these conditions. And actually one part of this idea is I saw an interview with Julian after he was uh, released on bail, after his first arrest in London. And he said to the journalists that they all should go for a couple of days in such a cell and ask the question if it is humane to put people into boxes. And this shows what wonderful and fine character Julian is. And I think we need to do it now. So that inspired you into, to this do this project? This was project. a big part of the inspiration, yes. So it just gives you an opportunity to explain to people who don't know about the case or about Julian what it's all about? Yes. And you find that people, most people are receptive to it? Absolutely. You tell them? Yes. They we shocked. tell them about it, we shut the door, they experience it and um, then they are shocked and then they start to do something and think and this is what it is about. That he's in there because of things that he's published yes. and nothing for no other reason? Absolutely, he done no crime, he can, only done right, so... And can they believe this? That this could happen in a Western so-called democracy? They are so shocked that they, in the first moment, maybe can't believe it. But when they then start to research and look into Julian's case, and when this is what we achieve with the cells, and we have achieved what we want. You hear back from some of the people who... Yes, who yes, do. we hear back um, when they s describe the experience, what it does to them. And when did you start this project? Um, we started actually officially last week. Last week. But we have uh, the big or the first cell in Leipzig in the exhibition, so people could experience this now since August. Yeah. And you said uh, earlier that you intend to bring it on the road to other countries in Europe, is that right? Yes. For example? We want to go to Brussels, mm -hmm. we want to go to Strasbourg to the hu uh, Court of Human Rights, and we go want to go to London. London? Yes. Uh, how, um... Have you had any problem with the police about even parking uh, trouble? None yet. No? No. no. <laughs> Not you just in the park moment. it like any, old, any other vehicle. Right? Yes. No, no one, of no any one. authorities are curious about this yet? No. Do you expect that to remain the same when you go to Britain? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> My husband is British, so no, he expects oh. quite a lot of trouble. Maybe. Now, are you going to drive out towards Woolwich where Belmarsh is in that area? Yeah, and uh, we got a suggestion last week to maybe bring it in front of the Ecuadorian embassy. You know? Ah, excellent uh, but idea. But we will see, you know. There's a lot of police around there still, I think. Yeah. But I, I think it's a great idea to try it anyway. Yeah. Uh, this is extraordinary because in the U.S. there's a bill, in, I think in Europe as well, though, a billboard truck that goes around in Washington. It's been going on for the last couple yeah. of months. But this is something quite extraordinary. So people... How long do people stay in there without wanting to get out, generally? The original plan was to let them be in there for 13 minutes, one minute for every year. Julian is persecuted in any shape or form, but most make it maximum four to five. 45 seconds? Minutes. The longest anybody has ever stayed is 45 minutes? Uh, no, um, I said uh, 13 minutes is the original yes. plan and most make it four to five minutes. Uh, yes. And the longest one was actually last Friday, a journalist made it for 13 minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah, but the average is 4 to 5 minutes. And then they want to come out. They want to get out. I didn't even make it that long I was, until I was banging on the yeah. door. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye.